Hello, my name is Sharon, and today I'm going to read It's Brave to Be Kind by Natasha Daniels. Okay. Never read this one before. Hi, kids. Do you know what kindness is? Of course you do. But did you know that there is so much more to kindness than being nice? It is in this story, you will read about a girl named Alex who is kind. Being kind means she's also accepting, caring, and brave. What does it mean to be accepting? In this story, Alex isn't afraid of people who are different. In fact, she loves to meet people who are different from her. Also, Alex is also caring and she can imagine how other people might feel. Alex is brave. Even though she's afraid to stick up for someone, she does it and it feels good. As you read this story, think of the ways that you are already kind and brave. Then imagine ways to start being even more kind, caring, brave at home, in school, and when you're out and about. Okay, we're turning the page. All right. Okay. Alex woke up and reached her arms up high as far as they could go. She got out of bed and stretched her legs, taking giant steps to the kitchen. This was different from yesterday when Alex jumped out of bed and hopped to the kitchen. Everybody wakes up and gets out of bed thought Alex. It's perfectly ordinary, but I do a different way every day. Alex loved to be different. Every morning, Alex ate cereal a different way. Today, she poured tea over her cereal instead of milk. She used her hands to talk to her dog. He didn't know sign language. Maybe we can learn together, thought Alex. When Alex said goodbye to her family, even her goodbyes were different. She gave her little brother a high five. She gave her mom a bear hug and growled a little. Turn the page. Alex rode the bus to school. She looked at the window. Every day she saw the same buildings, trees, and sidewalks. She noticed when things were different. The dog walker she saw every day only, had only five dogs today. Yesterday, there were seven. At school, Alex noticed that something was very different. Her classroom was quiet. Instead of hearing everyone talking and laughing, she heard silence. There was a new boy sitting in the back of the classroom. Who is that boy, wondered Alex. Where did he come from? The other kids asked him what his name was. I, John, he said. He spoke with an accent. Where are you from, they asked. The boy looked confused and said, I, John. The kids in the class started to laugh. One kid laughed the loudest. It was Greg. Alex wondered, why are they laughing? The new boy did sound different, but what was wrong with different? Miss Jen came in and hushed the class. She spoke with excitement. We have a new student in our class. His name is John. John knows Spanish because he is from another country where people speak Spanish. He will learn English here with us. Please help him get used to this class. Alex was excited. She, she, Alex was excited to meet someone from another country. She wondered what foods his family ate and how far John had traveled to get there. Alex liked 
making new friends. Miss Jen told everyone to take out their math homework. Alex pulled out her homework, but didn't look at it. She looked at John one more time. Her heart sank. Why is he crying? Greg was staring at John. Wait, hold on. Greg was staring at John and whispering to the other students. Alex felt yicky in her stomach. It was the same feeling Alex got when Greg said she had cooties and no one wanted to play with her. Miss John hushed the class again. She turned to write on the board. As soon as Miss John's face Faced away from the class, Greg threw a paper airplane at John's head. Everyone laughed except Alex. Alex wondered if she should say something. What could she do? Greg could be so mean. Before Alex decided what to do, Miss Jen turned around and gave the class a stern look. That's not how we treat new students, she said. Being new is hard, Alex thought. It was hard for me when I was new last year. It was, it would must be even harder if you don't know how to speak English yet. Greg is being mean and that makes it harder. John looked up from his desk and saw Alex. Alex smiled and gave him a little wave. John smiled and gave her a little wave back. Time flew, time flew by as Alex imagined all the questions she wanted to ask John. He probably had so many stories to tell. At recess, Alex searched the playground for John. She couldn't wait to play with him. Here's Alex searching everywhere. Alex almost gave up, but then she saw two feet they were sticking out from behind a nearby tree. She saw kids on the other side of the tree teasing John. Alex felt sick. It was that yucky feeling in her stomach. Her face got warm with anger. Greg, stop being so mean to John, Alex said. Greg turned away from John and looked at Alex. Mind your own business, Greg yelled. Alex turned to John and said, John, do you want to play with me? He didn't say a word, but he looked happy. Greg started to laugh and the other kids joined in. If you play with him, forget about ever playing with us. Greg was the boss of the playground. If Alex didn't play with Greg, maybe no one would play with her. She thought about what to do. We didn't want to play with you anyway, Greg said to Alex. You're too different. Your hair is weird. Alex's hand shot up on her head. She touched her new haircut. It was different. No one in the class had her hair like hers. I like my new hair, said Alex. Alex started to think, I like John, she thought. I want to play with him. I want to hear him speak Spanish. Maybe I can learn how to, to speak it. I want to ask John what his country was like and what foods he ate there. I wonder, does he have a sister? Does she go to our school? Alex took a deep breath. She was about to do something brave. Alex reached out her hand to John and said, John, do you want to play with me? See, he said with a big smile. Does that mean yes? Asked Alex. See, yes, said John, nodding. Greg, Greg face turned red. He said to the other kids, come on, let's go. Alex 
Alex told John she was sorry that the other kids were treating her in a mean way. She hoped he understood, even if he didn't know English very well. She pointed to the soccer field and they went to play. John was a good at soccer, very good. He showed Alex how they played in his country. He showed her how to dribble the ball from knee to knee. Soon, a few kids stopped with Greg and ran to the field. Can we play with you, they asked. Sure, said Alex. And one by one, all the kids left Greg and ran to the field. It was fun trying to bounce the ball on their knees. And it was fun to watch everyone try. Everyone, except Greg. Alex wondered where Greg was and she saw him. His two feet stuck out from behind the tree. Are you okay? asked Alex. What you care, said Greg. Go away. But Alex didn't go away. You aren't always nice, Greg, but I don't want you to be upset. Everyone's feelings are important, she said. Greg stood up. It isn't fair that everyone left. We were having a good time and you took them away. You don't have to be the boss all the time, said Alex, who was feeling very confident. But he doesn't speak English, said Greg. Alex laughed. We don't speak Spanish. You don't have to speak the same language to play soccer. We were just trying something different, said Alex. We're learning to bounce balls on our knees. John is showing us, ha us how. He's nice, come and play. Alex wanted to go back to the field and have fun. She had invited Greg to play and it was time for her to go back. Hey, wait, yelled Greg. Greg picked up a ball and kicked it hard at John who stopped it with his two feet. John flipped the ball up and kicked it back to Greg. John was a great at soccer, but Greg was good too. Alex noticed that she didn't have that yicky feeling in her stomach anymore. She was happy. She had listened to her heart. She was happy she had been brave. Today was a different kind of day, thought Alex, and it made it perfect. And that's the end of It's Brave to be Kind. Thank you.